This is a presentation of the 14 major muscles of the body. In this presentation, you will learn the names of the muscles and where they are located. You will also see images showing where each of the muscles is located, and you will also see images showing one exercise that can be done to work each particular muscle. This slide shows you the muscles of the body showing both the front view and the back view. Notice that some of the muscles can be seen from both the front view and the back view. Don't worry, you won't have to know this entire slide. We just wanted to show you how complex the muscles of the body are. Now let's get started. As you go through the presentation, you should pause the video on each slide and write down the information presented. To do this, you should create a four column chart with 14 rows, just like you see here. The first column should be titled Names of Muscles. The second column should be titled Location on the Body. The third column should ask, can this muscle be seen from the front view? And the fourth column should ask, can this muscle be seen from the back view? Our first muscle group is the pectorals. These are the muscles located on the chest. They help a person to push, and they can only be seen from the front view. Notice what this slide shows, and each of the slides will be like this. It gives you first the name of the muscle. In this particular case, it says pectorals. Second, it gives you a description of the location of that muscle. Here it says muscles located on the chest. And third, it tells you in the parentheses that it can be seen from the front view only. Then as you fill out your chart, for example, with this first slide, you would write under names of muscles, you would write pectorals. For location on the body, you would write chest. In the third column, can I see this muscle from the front view? You would write yes. In the fourth column, can I see this muscle from the back view? You would write no. So again, you should write for number one, pectorals, chest, yes, no. I hope that makes sense. Now let's move on. This shows someone performing the bench press. You can also see the scientific name pectoralis major given here. We're going to simplify the names of the muscles for you. For our purposes, you only need to know pectorals. In our weight room, we have this bench press, and we have also an easier chest press machine. But what if you wanted to work your pectorals at home? What exercise is nearly the same and uses only your body weight? That's right, push-ups. The next muscle group is the deltoids. These are muscles covering the shoulder joint. The deltoids help you raise your arm from the side, and they can be seen from the front and the back view. So for number two, you would write deltoids, shoulders, yes, and yes. Here's a picture of the deltoids. You'll see that it says anterior fibers, lateral fibers, and posterior fibers. Those three words, anterior, lateral, and posterior, mean front, middle, or side, and back, or rear, of the deltoids. In this picture, he is performing the dumbbell lateral raises. Dumbbells, as you can see, are the handheld weights. Next is the trapezius. This is the muscle of the lower neck and upper back. It allows you to shrug your shoulders and extend your head forward. It can be seen from the front and the back view as well. This exercise is called an upright row. Another simple exercise to work the trapezius is to simply shrug your shoulders. Go ahead and try it. Also, if you've ever gotten a massage on your shoulders, it was likely on your trapezius muscle. We hold a lot of tension and stress in our necks and trapezius region. That's why a massage feels so good there. You're releasing all that stress and tension. The next muscle is the biceps. This muscle should be very familiar to you. Anytime you make a muscle with your upper arm, you're flexing your biceps. This is the muscle of the front and inside of the upper arm. It allows you to flex or bend your elbow. We use the bicep muscles when we are pulling something toward us. You can see the biceps muscles from the front and the back view. This exercise is called concentration curls. It is very effective in helping to shape the peak of the biceps muscle. The opposite of biceps is the triceps. This is found on the back and bottom of the upper arm. It allows you to extend or straighten your elbow. We use the triceps when we are pushing something away. The triceps can be seen from the front and back view as well. 
One exercise that works the triceps very effectively is called dips. This is, however, a difficult exercise since you are pushing all of your body weight. If you do diamond push-ups, where your hands are close together while you do the push-ups, the main focus will also be on your triceps. Flexors and extensors. In your notes, these would count as one set of muscles. These are the muscles of your forearms. You can see them from the front and back views. In sports, anytime you need a good grip, requires strong forearm muscles. Things like swinging a bat or tennis racket and wrestling. You need strong flexors and extensors. This exercise is called a forearm curl. The latissimus dorsi is a large flat muscle located on the side of your back. I always give the analogy if you ever have an itch way on the side and you can't quite reach it as you try to scratch and it looks like you're giving yourself a hug, that is your latissimus dorsi. It's more obvious on the back view but it can be seen from the front view too. Pull-ups are one exercise that can work your lats. Not everyone can do pull-ups, so we have other exercises that can work your latissimus dorsi muscle as well. Abdominals. We all know this. These are the muscles over your stomach that helps you to generate force for different activities. Any sporting activity you can think of requires your abdominals to some extent. Everyone needs a strong core. Obviously, they can only be seen from the front view. Crunches are a very effective exercise for strengthening your abdominals. Crunches are different and safer than sit-ups. Notice in this picture that he lifts his upper body until his shoulder blades come off the floor. That's as far as you want to come up. Crunches also work the upper part of the abdominal muscles and too often we neglect working the bottom part of the abs. So in this picture he added in a reverse crunch by lifting his knee toward his chest. That engages the lower abdominals. On the side of your abdominal muscles are your obliques. They are located near your hips and help you with twisting. Again, if you think of sports that would require twisting, you might think of gymnastics, anything that involves throwing, flip turns in swimming, a receiver making a twisting catch, wrestling, a golf swing, anything where you twist your body. What's interesting about these is that you can see them from the front and you can also see them, the external obliques that is, from the back view. In this picture you can see him lying flat on his back and tapping his fingertips to the heel of each of his shoes. You can also do twisting crunches to work your obliques. The next muscle is the spinal erectors. These are the muscles of your lower back. If you wake up in the morning and find your lower back stiff and it's hard to stand up straight, those are your spinal erectors that you're feeling. They are seen from the back view only. This is a back extension using a fitness ball. The quadriceps are a set of four muscles located on the front of your thigh that help you extend your leg. These are very strong muscles that help you walk, squat, jump, kick, etc. This slide shows the names of the four muscles that make up the quadriceps. One exercise that works your quadriceps is the squat. The nice thing about this is that you can do them with just your body weight, but you need to be careful on your form so that you don't hurt your knees. The glutes are the muscles that form the bulk of the buttocks muscles. Most of us have heard of gluteus maximus, but there is also gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. Obviously the glutes are only seen from the back view. These are sometimes called hip extensions or reverse leg lifts. You could also do this same exercise just lying on your stomach. A lot of people like doing squats to work the glutes too. The hamstrings are a group of muscles opposite from the quadriceps that are found on the back of your thigh. The hamstrings are like the biceps in your arm. They help you bend or flex your leg at the knee. They can only be seen from the back view. When you run or jog, you need good hamstrings to help you with your leg curl. A lot of athletes will pull their hamstrings, which is a very painful injury, so this is a set of muscles that you want to strengthen to help prevent injury. 
The leg curl machine is very effective in strengthening your hamstrings. The one we have in our weight room does not look like this one, but it still works the hamstrings just the same. Here, you see them called by their anatomical name, the biceps femoris. The last muscle is called the gastrocnemius. We say gas, troc, ne, me, us, gastrocnemius. This is the muscle that forms the majority of your calf. It can be seen from the front and back view. Anytime you need to push off your toes, you are engaging the gastrocnemius muscle. Jumping is one example. Obviously, a ballerina would need a strong gastrocnemius muscle as well. The seated calf raise is one way to work your gastrocnemius. I find that you can do toe raises standing on a stair to really work them too. If those are too easy, try doing them one foot at a time. So what have we learned today? If you were taking notes, your notes should look like this. Pause the video for a minute or two and compare your notes to mine. If you find that you're missing anything on your chart, go ahead and fix it. Pause the video now. For those who may prefer the notes in Spanish, here they are. Pause the video for a minute or two and compare your notes to mine. If you feel that you need or want further reinforcement of this information, try the Poke Muscle game. Go to www.anatomyarcade.com slash games slash pam slash pam.html. Many of our students found this game very helpful. One thing that I would caution you is that some of the muscle names in the game are slightly different than the ones in this presentation. For our class quizzes, you will need to know the names that were given in this presentation. For your quizzes, you will need to be able to look at a picture of the human body, find the different locations that you copied down on your chart, and write the names of the corresponding muscle for each of those locations. If you have any questions about this information, or if you have any questions about the quizzes, make sure you talk to your teacher well before the quiz. And now with this information, you will have a better understanding of how your bodies work and your muscle anatomy as you work to create your personal fitness programs and work to get healthier.